Hello, welcome back and thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Transformation Education. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Cherie. I have an Instagram page called The Rainbow Hair Artist and I specialise in crazy transformations like these. If this interests you, please keep on watching and I am trying to get as many more of these out there as I possibly can to just share a little bit more about what I do and how I work with you. So this was our starting canvas. She's had some previous vivids in her hair before which have faded out to a bit of blue on her ends and a little bit of an orangey kind of yellow in her mids. And she's about a natural level four at her roots. So what I'm gonna do here is a full head of foils weaved and sliced, just sort of a combination and back to back. And what I'm putting on here is bleach and 20 volt. So I've weaved out my first section, added in a little bit of a tease at the root just to help diffuse that line a little bit. And now I'm gonna put on the product. And you'll notice I just kind of try and feather it through um, the ends of the hair right here. Just feathering that through, trying to just get like all those little dark pieces, but also being careful not to overlap. And when I fold the foil, you see how the hair of the ends is left out? And the reason that I'm doing that most of the time is to just keep those ends out of the way of the bleach so that they're not going to be contaminated. And we don't need or want any more bleach on those ends right now at this moment. So just putting them aside and carrying on with my work. I do like to really push that tease in nice and tight when I'm foiling just to get all those little fuzzy hairs out of my way. So you might notice me really trying to push that tease in and that's why I just avoid those fluffs. playing this in fast forward for you because it did actually take me about two hours just to put these foils in her hair. When I'm doing a full head of foils back to back it does usually take me between an hour and a half and two hours just to apply. So um, don't feel bad if it takes you a long time like she does have a lot of hair as well and I'm not exactly a fast hairdresser. <laughs> I just go at my own pace and try to do the best that I can possibly do. One more thing I just wanted to mention about the way I'm doing these foils is I'm just really doing it randomly. I'm weaving some, I'm slicing some, some of them I'm doing them close to the root and some of them I'm doing them a little bit off scalp. And I just find that doing it a bit random like that just helps like create a nice blended foilage sort of look. And because it takes me so long to actually apply a full head of foils like this, I generally will start off with a lower peroxide in the back and as I move around to the front I'll actually bump that peroxide up. So in this circumstance I did go up to 30 vol when I got to this part of the head just to help even out that processing time. By the time I finished foiling the whole head the back was ready to come off so I did actually take her to the sink and rinse off the foils like at the nape of her neck that were the first foils that I did because they were ready and I didn't want to over process those. So I'd rather go through the effort and wash them off and then know that I'm not going to over process. I usually like to foil on a bit of an angle when I come up to the, the front pieces around here. I just find that it just looks a bit less harsh. And here is me checking these foils just to see you know, if they're ready to come off. I've had a look at that and I've decided, yes, they are ready to come off. So I'm gonna just pull them out, the ones that I'm ready and I'm going to rinse. So I'll pull them out at the chair just cause it's a bit easier for me to see. 
and then I'll pin everything up and uh, really like well and tightly that I don't want to wash. Just get everything like really well prepared before I take her over to the basin. I just find it's easier that way and you, it's, you're less likely to get lost. So here I'm quite literally just going to rinse these out, just give it a really thorough rinse so that all of that product is out of her hair and that should be enough to just stop them from processing. If you're worried you can always shampoo it if you like just for that added insurance but I gave it a very thorough rinse and I felt that that was enough. After a further 20 minutes, the front and the sides were ready to come out as well. So here I'm just going to take all of this colour out and give it a shampoo. And then the next step that I'm going to do here is just add in a little bit of bleach and ten bowl to those mids and ends and just try and remove any of that old colour that's in there. Here I go with the shampoo. This is just an ordinary shampoo, it's not a purple shampoo or anything like that. I'm just making sure I'm getting all that product out at the moment. So this time I decided to actually just leave the shampoo in. And what I'm going to do here is just apply some bleach and ten vol through her mids and ends just to try and remove some of that old um, direct dye that is in there. And by applying it this way, I've already got water and shampoo in the hair. Now I'm applying the bleach and ten vol, so it's essentially like a bleach bath. It's only very weak, but it's just good to try and strip off anything that's on the hair. Even if I can't remove all of her colour, doing this is just still a good way to prep for vivids because you're going to strip off anything that's on there. So any kind of minerals or any sort of product buildup should come off at this stage. And you're just going to leave that cuticle raw and open and that's the perfect environment for a vivid colour. Once I've worked it all through those mids, I'm just going to come back here and be a bit generous with it on those ends. And I'll just spend the next few minutes just rubbing it through with my hands. And this only stayed on for probably about three minutes. I usually won't leave this on for any more than five minutes. Just being super thorough here and reapplying. I really hate wearing gloves too, so you very rarely will see me wear gloves, only when I really have to. Now I'm about to put some pink shampoo in her ends. This is a really clever trick that I use quite a lot whenever I've got that old like bluey greeny kind of colour, that been in the chlorine too long sort of blonde. Because pink is a shade of red, and we know that the red is going to neutralise the green, uh, it just works and it's just a clever little trick that I actually find myself using quite often. So I'm just rubbing that through and I'm focusing that on her blue ends. And also while I'm at it, I'm adding in some purple shampoo on her roots to focus on the yellow. So we've got purple shampoo on the yellow parts, pink shampoo on the green parts, and um, there is also bleach in there as well. So <laughs> I know it sounds a little bit crazy and I work in some weird ways sometimes, but this is just how I roll. If I ever do end up pre-toning before I do a vivid, I nine times out of 10 will go for a purple shampoo because it will just tone that yellow out of the hair and it will also just leave that cuticle nice and like raw for me rather than adding in pigment with a oxidizing tint.
And I think I've done as much toning as I can possibly do with the purple shampoos, um, with, with the coloured shampoos that is. So you can see here when I'm rinsing it out, the hair does look different. It certainly looks more balanced. The colours are looking a bit more even and just, I've just got a better foundation to work on. You just want to bear in mind not to do that for too long. You've got to work really quickly because there was still that little bit of bleach in there. Uh, if you're not careful, that can lift those roots. So just be careful with it. As for the conditioner, I'm using a purple conditioner as well just to go that little bit extra mile with the yellow and just help me tone it out a little bit more. If I have the time, I'll always try and comb through my client's conditioner. Notice I just put a little towel under her neck just to make it a bit more comfortable for her while she's sitting there. You're just gonna get such a better result if you take the time and comb that conditioner through. And it's also just going to give that toning conditioner a little bit more time to do its work. Now that I've done all that colour balancing at the basin, I've brought her back over to the chair and it's time for me to do a little root fade. So I've mixed up 20 grams of 511, which is ash, and I've just gone and added in about five, uh, 3 grams of 30 and mixed that with 5 volume developer. Now I'm just going to go through nice and quick and paint those roots and all this is going to do is just help diffuse that line. It's not going to fully cover the foils that I've done. I'm just purely diffusing that line so that I'm taking away any little lumps and bumps, any little harsh lines that I may have um, added by foils. Even though I've done my best to put the T's in there when I have foiled it, um, I'm not perfect and every now and then you will get a little bit of a a, a patchy bit so it's just good to do a little bit of a root fade if you think you need it and also it's good to just remember the more effort you put in here to creating that perfect base the better that your vivid color is going to be because we know direct dyes they're kind of like a cellophane they can only cover up what's there so whatever the base is that is going to show through the vivids and um, contribute to the final result so I strongly recommend taking the time and getting that base like perfect before you do any kind of vivid work. So once this was fully applied, I let it process for about five minutes. And then once I felt that it was ready to rinse off, I went and washed it off with cool water, gave it a shampoo and condition before bringing her back. And now I'm gonna dry this hair off 100% before I start applying my vivids. So this was the result of the foils and the root fade and the color balancing. I managed to get a fairly even canvas. These were the colors that I mixed up. Most of the time when I'm doing vivids I like to have four panels and I'll always typically start at the back like at the nape of the neck and then work my way up and I just find that that's easier and uh, there's less fiddling around and once you paint a panel you can just sort of leave it there and then move up the head everything just seems to work a bit better for me when I do it that way. I just want you to notice here what I'm doing with my fingers is actually blending this color uh, before I apply my next color. So I put that blend in there now, then that's already blended and faded. Now all I have to do is go over the top of it with my next color and it's already kind of blended for me. I'm going to create another color by doing this, by overlapping the pink with the purple. I will create 
um, like kind of accidentally but purposely <laughs> a third colour in there which I love and just is really good for blending you get that third colour where you mix the two and the same with the pink I've faded it out a little bit first with my fingers so the fade is already in there I didn't really want to overlap my orange very much though with the pink I've been really enjoying using these mesh sheets as well. Um, they're just so much more soft and nicer to work with than using foil to separate sections. And the thing that I love about mesh sheets as well is the fact that they're see-through. I'm very visual when I'm doing my colour work. I really like to see everything so I can get an idea of how it's going to look. So I highly recommend mesh sheets. The brand of this is called Glide. I'll have to mention it in the description below for you. You may be able to notice me consistently um, walking away from the colour and what I'm actually doing there is wiping my hands in between every section. It does get a little bit annoying but you must wipe your hands in between every colour otherwise you are going to get some cross contamination. So I highly recommend keeping a towel on standby uh, if you're doing multiple colours like these. From the fact that the roots are purple um, melting into pink there's no real order or structure to what I'm doing here I'm just really quite visual and I just I'll do a little bit here and a little bit there if this one I've dragged through pink and the others I've melted in a bit of orange I didn't want it to look like a solid block though so that's why I've done that and a few pieces I'm just sort of melting through just like a clear color just because I didn't want it to look too solid, if that makes sense. So it is a purple to pink to orange melt, but it's not like I've stuck to it religiously. I've just done a bit of my own random blending. This is some of the clear being applied and all it is is just conditioner and I added a tiny little bit of purple to it just to sort of tone the yellow. And uh, there you go, I didn't even stick to it, I overlapped it with the orange. <laughs> Notice here that I'm about to overlap some orange over the top of the pink that I've dragged down. So don't be afraid to overlap. Overlapping is like a really good way of getting like a multi-tone look. So certainly don't be afraid of overlapping a little bit. Sometimes it just gives a really cool effect.
colours like these generally take me about one hour to apply. You do have to be super thorough when you're working with vivids. Like I reckon a good three times more thorough than when you're working with tint because you don't have that peroxide to help you. You really have to manually push that pigment into the hair. And if you're not thorough, your colours will probably go a little bit patchy. Once I've finished applying these colours, I'll generally process them for 20 minutes. The longer the better, but when you've been working for um, a good four, four to five hours, you're kind of pretty over it, so 20 minutes is all that it needs. This is how it looks once it's processing. I did forget, unfortunately, to record uh, when I was rinsing her out, but just remember to use cold water always. I don't shampoo at that stage either, I just rinse really, really thoroughly and if I feel like the hair needs it then I might apply a treatment or conditioner but just really want to avoid shampoo especially for the first time. And the reason for that is because every time we shampoo these colours they are going to fade off a little bit so I don't want to start the fading process from now when I've only just done the colour and especially because you're just washing the colour off for the very first time you just don't want to uh, risk those colours running together. If you follow my work on Instagram, you'll know I'm probably you'll probably know I'm a huge fan of curls. I pretty much curl everything I do, and you can see here how the head looks when it's straight. It's it's a nice colour, but it really just doesn't have that glam factor. So I highly recommend to any hairdressers always like take that extra step and curl your client's hair and it's not really so much for them as it is for me just so that I can get that perfect photo the hair looks better it reflects light better it's it's just really takes it to the next level so highly recommend putting in the time and just giving it a curl speaking of time this took me about six six and a half hours in total which is actually quite normal for this kind of thing Once all the curling was finished, I took her outside into the natural light and then I started taking some nice photos just with my iPhone. If anyone is interested, I do actually have a um, tutorial on how I take my photos and how I edit my photos. I might just drop a link for that below. And if you've stayed this long, thank you so much for watching my work. I really hope that that can help you um, with similar kind of things. Please don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more hair transformations like this. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. Bye for now.